Okay, so once you've learned about perceptual map and what perceptual maps are used for and what are the objectives of creating the perceptual map, let's start to learn about how to create a perceptual map based upon any data that you might have. So this is based upon the perceptions of college students on how they perceive each of those brand performing on two different dimensions, which is healthy which is healthy selections as well as taste. So we can clearly see that in terms of the perceptions that consumers have about McDonald's when it comes to healthy selection is not good because this is on a scale of one to 10, right? So one score, a score of one would mean that McDonald's doesn't have any healthy selection versus a score of 10 would mean that that particular brand has a lot of healthy selections. Again, in terms of the perception of ta taste, a score of 1 would mean that it's not tasty at all versus a score of 10 would mean that it is a tasty place to eat, right? So we can see the perceptions of McDonald's, we can see the perception of Wendy's and all the other brands when it comes to healthy selection and taste. Let's talk a little bit about how we create perceptual maps, right? So this is about the mechanics of creating a perceptual map. So we'll, we are going to use Excel to create a perceptual map. Then there, now there are like two ways that you can go about creating the perceptual map. One is by creating a scatter plot. Another is by creating a bubble chart. And both of those are very, very similar in the ways that we created. So just click on insert because we want to insert a chart. And be sure to click on some random spot that is empty because if we click on the data then Excel will automatically try to create a chart for you which is not something that we want because Excel may not necessarily get how we want the chart to be created, right? So just click on some random spot, click on insert and in the charts tab we can see we can have scatter plot as well as bubble plot. So there are two ways you can create uh, charts that have x and y axis. So let's just go uh, through the scatter plot route. So click on scatter plot. This is blank right now because no data is selected, but we do want to select data. And the two ways of selecting data is either we can right click on it and then select data or here in the chart designs tab, we can see that once we click on this, we can select data as well. So when we select data, this box opens up, we'll add, we add, this one we want to add McDonald's so we are going to have to go do this individually the x-axis is this and then the y-axis is this All right so now we see that McDonald's is visible here again what do we want we want to add another data variable as well we want to add another brand so we are going to choose Wendy's the x values of Wendy's is this the y value of Wendy's is this All right Again, we want to add Burger King. The X value of Burger King is this. The Y value of Burger King is this, right? So we can see now we've selected three and three brands are visible. We want to add Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. We go through the same process for all the different brands that we want to create a perceptual map for the final one being Chipotle right x-axis the y-axis value is this and we create this now we can see that all the brands that we are interested in for the perceptual map has been created now in some cases these axes from 0 to 10 is selected by Excel randomly, right? So for example, if we had a value here that was different, then uh, the axis scale might be 11 or 12. Now that is not something that we want because we know that our scale goes from uh, 10, uh, our scale goes from 1 to 10, right? Our scale is from 1 to 10. Uh, but this is showing from 0 to 10. So we have to change that. In some cases, if the values are different, it might go from 0 to 11. So you will have to, again, uh, change that as well. So we'll just also take a look at how we are going to do that. This ideally has to go from 1 to 10 because the survey that we used to get this perception was on a scale of 1 to 10. 
there was no option for a zero, right? So what we can do is we are we need to change the axis. So here on the plus sign, if we click on it, here is axis. We want to make changes on the axis. We just click on this, go to more options. Now here is the axis options. This one, if you click on the axis options, you see that it goes from zero to ten, which is not true. You want it to go from one to ten. So you just click one and it goes from one to ten, right? So from one to ten. Now if for some exam for re some reason if this was 11 or 12 you could change it here to make it however much you wanted 9 which is not the case we want it to be 10 right because it's from 1 to 10 so we'll just put in 10 and this major shows the difference 1 2 3 4 right the difference is 1 if you make it 2 then the difference is going to be 1 and the difference of 2 right which is again based upon our own ease we can choose whatever we want again this does not exactly look like a perceptual map because of the grid lines so what we are going to do is just select the grid lines and delete the grid lines again for a perceptual map generally the axes are in the middle right so what we want to do first is we converted this from 1 to 10 we want to convert this from 1 to 10 as well right so axis options again we selected this axis and it goes from 1 to 10 right so now because we want this to be in the middle and the middle I would say of 1 to 10 is going to be 5.5 would be the middle right so here the, it has automatically selected one as the intersection point right so what we want to do is we want to create the axis value and I'm going to put 5.5 as the center so what's going to do is it's going to move the axis to 5.5 now again for this I want this to be moved to 5.5 so I'm just going to tinker with that again axis value it's intersecting at 1 I want it to intersect at 5.5 right click somewhere else now what we see is we see that it intersects in the middle and now this looks very much like a perceptual map right but still we don't know what these brands are it's missing some labels and information so what we can do is we can just create labels for what the x and y axis mean so what we can do is go to insert just create a text box we know that the y axis is associated with taste right so t a s t e taste for the y axis and then the x axis is healthy selection so we'll just create the labels for them on our own manually now what we also know is that all of these are different brands but we also want to label these brands if we hover over the, uh, each of those dots we see that this is Chipotle and the coordinates are 8.79 and 8.68 if we go over here we see that this is Subway if you hover is the, this yellow dot then we see that it's Carl's Jr. and Hardee's if you hover over this gray we see that it's Burger King and the coordinates are 2.22 and 4.11 but what we want is we also want to label these right so how we can go about labeling this is we click on the chart options or chart element tools here we can see that the data labels have not been crossed uh, selected right so we just click data label and then we select the data so right now what it's doing is it's selecting this particular box on its own so what we can do is click on the label options and then right now it's showing the y-axis right 4.89 which is the y-axis for McDonald's so if you click on the x-axis as well it will show both the x-axis and y-axis but what we also want is the series name so we can just click on it now it's showing us McDonald's and what we can do is we can just remove the X value and Y value because what we ultimately want is just to see where McDonald's is in the perceptual map right similarly for Carl's Jr. and Hardee's what we can do again is for Carl's Jr. and Hardee's go to data label again label options right so we can see remove this put in a series name and it shows Carl's Jr. and Hardee's we can do the same for Wendy's as well go to data labels more options and then 
instead of the y value we just put in the series name right and then for do it for chipotle as well label more options and then instead of the y value go for the series name as well do this for all the other brands as well I know it's a little bit of a tedious process but once done it looks really really good right so here we can see all the different brands and where they stand in terms of the perceptual map so we can see that these brands are close together with each other that means they compete with each other much more than the brands that are farther away from them right because these occupy a distinct and different position in the consumers mind compared to these when it comes to healthy selection and taste so for some reason because generally in perceptual maps you cannot you do not see these labels right from 1 to 10 or from 1 to 10 here so what we can do is we can try to remove this right so we can just click on it these are axis elements right so you could just click on axis again to go to more options and what you can do is for labels you don't want any label to be visible so if you click on the axis right and then for labels axis options things that we changed in uh, earlier right so we can use that to change this but what we want to do right now is associated with the labels and i want no labels so if i click none then now i see that there are no labels associated with this and this looks like the perceptual map with two axes right taste and healthy selections so thank you for watching uh, i hope you learned how to make uh, this uh, scatter plot way of creating perceptual maps now you can use a very very similar method to try to create a perceptual map using bubble charts as well it's almost a virtually identical process that you will have to follow when you are creating a perceptual map using a bubble chart the only difference being that you can change the shape and size of each of those dots so if you have any questions concerns let me know otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope this video helped you in terms of creating a perceptual map thank you